Since March 2020 and COVID swept into North America, the longest undefended border in the world has been closed to all but non-essential travel. Border cities have really felt the effect of the closure, which dramatically reduced business. Is now the time to open it up? Hello and welcome to the Unpublished Cafe. I'm Ed Hand. We're coming to you from a remote location and practicing physical distancing to enhance safety. 14 months in counting, the Canada-US border has been closed to non-essential travel. Travel's down 80% between the two countries since the pandemic began. And the tourism industry on both sides of the border has been devastated by the closure and they're looking for a clear path to reopen. Our unpublished vote question asks, do you support the reopening of the Canada-US border to non-essential travel? Yes, no, or unsure. You can log on and vote right now at unpublished.vote and have your voice heard. Now, for many people on both sides of the border, the confusion as to who can cross and why has been unclear. Americans with seasonal homes in Canada can't come across to their property, yet there are some Canadians who ignored the restrictions and flew to the U.S. to get vaccinated. Now, coming up on the Unpublished Cafe, we'll hear from Detroit and the Canada U.S. Business Association. But first, I'm pleased to be joined by Beth Potter, President and CEO of the Tourism Industry Association of Canada. And Beth, frustration with the border closing. You want a plan, any plan. What are the roadblocks you're running into to getting a plan? So there's just a real lack of clarity around what the government wants to see before they're ready to open uh, the border. And that clarity, you know, is around things like, you know, how do we handle vaccinated travelers versus non-vaccinated travelers? How do we handle uh, the variants that uh, come with this virus? Uh, and how do we process this um, in a way that creates a seamless traveler experience for any traveler uh, coming in and out of Canada. Uh, would uh, the industry association be in support of maybe a multi-stage opening or, or do you want to just see something wide open and let's get going? So we'd like to see the border open as soon as possible, but we do support the recommendations that were made by the expert panel on testing and screening. Uh, they set out a, um, a series of recommendations, including a phased approach to reopening the border, um, and also some recommendations on how to handle uh, the different levels of immunity or vaccine um, for travelers as they cross the border. What about vaccine passports? Is, is that something that uh, TIAC would like to see? So we think that a proof of vaccination or a proof of immunity is uh, certainly a way to make it easier for travelers to enter Canada. Um, but what we'd like to see is Canada adopt a system that is uh, in line with or on par with uh, what's happening in other uh, G7 and G20 countries. Uh, and the reason for that is that, you know, traveling is a global activity. Um, and we want to make sure that when people are choosing Canada as a destination, that uh, it's simple, uh, it's uncomplicated and easy to understand as far as what their requirements are going to be in order to gain access to the country. What other uh, G7 or what other what are other G7 nations doing then to start opening up borders? So we've seen in Europe um, the um, the beginnings of, of use of a, a passport pass, um, but the conversation around what exactly is going to be used between you know Canada and the U.S., what the U.S. is going to look use, what um, uh, the U.K. is going to use, those are all conversations that are taking place right now. Uh, different border standards. I wonder if that makes it challenging. You know, when you look across, you know, uh, the 49th parallel, you know, what's in, in Michigan is going to be different than than what's in Montana. Let's say one's a hot spot and, and one's not. Does coming up with a standard make it more challenging or or uh, do, do we have a just a blanket system or do you sort of open it regionally where it's, you know, things are safe, things are unsafe? So in our conversations with CBSA, and, and this is the agency that manages uh, the border, um, you know, it's very clear that uh, one system will be in place, uh, regardless of where you come across, um, you know, across that 49th parallel, um, and that they really do not um, recommend a regional approach. And, and I can understand that, um, because once you get into Canada, you can move around wherever you, mm -hmm. wherever you are. So, um, 
so really, you know, we, when we open the, the border between Canada and the U.S., it's got to be open from one end of the country to the other. Did the tourism industry lose a lot of workers? Well, I imagine they would have lost a lot of workers, but I'm wondering, can they be replaced? You know, we've been hearing about so many people who have been unable to find work or find workers. Yeah, so in Canada, we would normally employ uh, 1.8 million Canadians, and we know that more than 500,000 of them have been displaced uh, through, uh, you know, due to closures and restrictions in place. Um, and so businesses are going to have to rehire. The, the challenge that we're going to have is that we were in a labor shortage prior to the pandemic. Um, and we know that some of those 500,000 displaced workers have moved on to other industries, um, feeling the need to continue to work and, and, uh, and pay the bills during the pandemic and who can blame them for that. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's a long and big challenge for us as we, as an industry, try to, uh, try to bring staff back and rehire. In terms of dollars, what would a partial reopening mean for the, the tourism industry in Canada? If we could get 20% back, that's $19 billion. That's a huge uh, uptick. Mm -hmm. um, and it would actually help for us to see a, a little bit of a shortening of, of the total recovery time. Right now, we're thinking that um, it's going to take us until about 2025 to get back to 2019 levels. Uh, so if we could see a 20% uptick uh, in visitation, um, you know, for the remainder of this year, we could potentially shave a year off of that recovery time frame. Oh, that would be good. That would be good. Uh, Beth, I want to thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Beth Potter is president and CEO of the Tourism Industry Association of Canada. On the other side of the 49th parallel, it seems some American politicians are getting antsy about reopening the border. Mark High is the president of the Canada U.S. Business Association, and he joins us now. And Mark, it seems U.S. politicians are, are getting a little more vocal and forceful about reopening. What's sort of spurring this on now? Yeah, hi, Ed. Thanks for uh, having me on again. Um, yeah, it's been a long series of uh, months, months and months of months, actually, uh, that we haven't been able to um, to visit each other and go back and forth. So uh, there's certainly pressure from this side uh, on uh, from uh, business folks, from families, uh, from people owning vacation homes uh, uh, up on uh, the north shore of, or the east shore of uh, Lake Huron. Uh, from here in Detroit, uh, uh, that they want to get back there. It's been it's been a year and a half. Um, or approaching that. Uh, and from the other side, uh, Windsor in particular, uh, right across the, the river from me, uh, uh, they're hurting very badly. It really uh, is built as a, uh, a suburb of, of Detroit and uh, their businesses, uh, their uh, industry is, is really built around uh, being in, in close connection. So a lot of people have really uh, been hurting for, for a long time. Yeah. You know, uh, essential travel has been uh, continuing between the two countries. How much is non-essential travel worth? Well, I think the the numbers on um, I haven't checked them lately, but the numbers uh, on on the bridge and the tunnel uh, here in Windsor are that the traffic is down ninety percent uh, for uh, not counting trucks. Trucks are at maybe ninety percent mm -hmm. of what they were before. Um, so there's a whole stream of uh, goods uh, going back and forth, um, uh, auto parts, uh, uh, farm products, uh, medical supplies, um, really anything, uh, everything uh, continues. But but you you take the the, the civilian traffic uh, and and cut it uh, to ten percent. Uh, it's a big change. Oh yeah, it's a huge change, and I can imagine. Well, you know, we have uh, cross border here around Cornwall. We have. Uh, Cross border, obviously, right around the right across the country, and and you know, is it is the issue the length of the border? You know, when I figure when you make a, a reopening standard for for a border, you know, places could be safe and no problem, but you could still have hot spots as we have been seeing here in Ontario and, and you guys in the states too. Uh, is the problem you, you'd sort of have to sort of roll it out regionally? Yeah, I think that's that's certainly part of it. Uh, I don't know how many crossings there are. A hundred, <laughs> couple hundred, uh, anywhere from like the, the bridge and the tunnel here where you see mm. uh, several thousand people uh, an hour going over or uh, some places in South Dakota where you've probably got 10 people a day or something. So 
Um, you'd like to think that you could pick and choose, uh, but that's a lot easier said than done when, when you're dealing with that many locations. What, what are your members telling you about you know, the border and, and their concerns? Well, certainly, uh, as I say, the Windsor folks uh, are, are um, very uh, desperate. is really not too strong a word, uh, desperate to get back over here. Um, a lot of the small manufacturers there um, are used to making sales calls, service calls, uh, especially the mold makers uh, in Windsor, Essex County. Um, you know, they're selling a $200,000 uh, press or something. That's not something you buy over the internet. You got to have somebody come and tell you how it works and where it fits and, and really um, kick the tires on it. So, um, yeah, you think they're essential and, and yeah, they can come over. Uh, but then at this point, uh, they've had to uh, then go back and, and, and quarantine for 14 days and get a few tests in between. So, um, that's really hard for a lunch meeting or even a sales call to, to do if you can only do it every two weeks or something. How, how would your organization like to see the reopening of the Canada-U.S. border? Well, we've progressed a long way uh, in, in a year. Um, uh, the, the testing uh, is, is uh, fast, uh, uh, easy, um, available. Um, so testing certainly um, is going to be part of this. Uh, the vaccinations are very effective uh, and very available and pretty widely distributed, at least on, on this side of the border. So you're gonna um, have 60% more or less uh, here in, in Michigan that, that are fully vaccinated. And um, has, that's been shown to, to be very effective. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't mean you can't get sick, but that's what the testing does. So um, real issue is who verifies the vac vaccine status. Uh, is a card enough. What, what about vaccine passports? Is that something that uh, your memberships, uh, your membership would em embrace for, you know, people who are fully vaccinated that way makes, you know, travel, that kind of thing much smoother? Uh, I, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, and I think a lot of our folks, uh, there are certain uh, members on, on, on the side of, of, of the border that, that uh, see Having a vaccine passport is some infringement on their freedom to, mm. to not be vaccinated, to their freedom to, to get mm. sick. So uh, there are um, moves afoot in, in, and have been passed in several states to, to forbid that. And, and noise has been made along those lines here in, in Michigan as well. I don't expect the governor would sign that, but neither does she really want to take that on and be the only one. I think there is a vaccine passport process being started in New York State whether that will be available to non-New York State people down the road. Um, maybe that's, that's an opportunity for, for, for people to, to get some verification, mm -hmm. but uh, New York's a big state. It'll take a while for them to, to even solve that uh, for themselves. Mark, I wanna thank you for joining us. Sure, happy, happy to help here. And uh, I think things are gonna change uh, pretty quickly, at least in stages. My guess is maybe September, um, but there may be something as quick as uh, as yet this month. So, um, fingers we'll, crossed. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All the best, Mark. Thanks. Thanks, Ed. Talk to you soon. Mark High is the president of the Canada U.S. Business Association. Our unpublished vote question asks: Do you support the reopening of the Canada U.S. border to non-essential travel? Yes, no, or unsure. You can log on and vote right now at unpublished.vote. I want to thank Beth Potter, President and CEO of the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, and Mark High, President of the Canada U.S. Business Association, for joining us. And I want to thank you for watching the Unpublished Cafe. Stay safe. I'm Ed Hand.